So let's start by looking at what it is that we're trying to fix. So here's uh, one of our researchers in our molecular physics, physiology and biophysics department, Dr. Jacobson. If we look for his record in Wikidata, we can see that he has one, but it's actually a pretty sparse record. It has uh, no description of him. It says that he's a human and it gives his ORCID ID, but there's no reference. And that's basically it. So we're going to try to see if we can make his record be more uh, full than that. I should start by showing you the source of the data that I'm using to um, know who the researchers are that I'm interested in. So the School of Medicine, which is what I've been working on now, um, has actually a index for each letter of the alphabet for the faculty. And you can see it's very well structured. So it's very easy to scrape basically each of these 26 pages here and get all of the uh, faculty that are associated with the School of Medicine. Also, prior to this step I'm gonna show now, you need to um, download all of the ORCID records for people who said they worked at Vanderbilt. So, um, this involves a search of the ORCID API and then downloading a lot of records. So this step then tries to match people up with their ORCID IDs by doing fuzzy string matching with their names. If it finds a good match and if the department that they said that they work for in ORCID matches with the department that I'm scraping, then it assumes that it's a good match. If it doesn't, um, if it's a good match to the name, but there's no department given or a different department, then it asks me to confirm. So we'll go ahead and run this. So the first person didn't give an, a, a, part, a department, but it looks like a good match. So I'll accept that. Here's some that matched with the molecular physiology department. So that's good. Here's somebody who gave their name as cardiovascular medicine. That's from the medical center. So that's also good. Here's another good match. Uh, here is somebody else, no department given. I've actually already checked his ORCID record and he is the right person. So that's all it takes to do that. Now I'm gonna run the script that uses various forms of data to try to match up the researchers at Vanderbilt with their records in Wikidata if they exist or to determine that there isn't any record for them in Wikidata. Um, it does a number of different screening actions, and we'll see examples of several of them as the script runs. So the first thing it's doing is downloading some information. Um, there's a couple researchers that it didn't find any matches for. Um, it did, however, do a Sparkle query to try to find the ORCID for this person here, and it was able to match them up with a record. record. Um, if it doesn't find any matches, then it'll, uh, it'll check for trying to match the name. And if it finds a matching name, it'll do certain things like check the birth date. So for example, this person was born too long ago. Um, here's a couple more that it found by Sparkle Search. Uh, here, is a Wikidata that was too old. Here's another Wikidata item that was not for a human. It was probably for a disambiguation page. Um, now we can see here, based on the description, football player and coach is not what we're interested in. Um, here's another person too old, an American businessman, and we have now run out of options. So it's concluded that none of those people are Charles E. Cobb. Um, now here's another one that it does. It's got a really good name match with someone who um, had already been um, matched up when I brought the chemistry department data into Wikidata. So there's a, it knows that this is a person who already works at Vanderbilt and it's a very high match. The other thing that happens is sometimes when it, it does a search for the initials and it comes up with a person for which Wikidata does not know the full name, but it does know the ORCID ID. And in that case, um, it checks with the ORCID API 
and asks what the person's name is, and then the script um, pulls out the first name and compares it. So this S Mishra is actually Sanju Mishra, not Smriti Mishra. So I know that's the wrong person. Uh, here's an Indian actress. Okay, so no match there. Uh, here again is a football player. Now, here is a Ross Stein that is a physicist that works for U.S. Geological Survey. So none of the, so I don't need to look up anything further about that. And that's it. Now, um, here's a case where it matched with a D. Wasserman. However, um, they had an ORCID ID that did not match the known ORCID ID for David Wasserman. So it eliminated that one on its own. And then here's a philosopher. Uh, I think we can probably skip that one. Now, it, here's a case where it matched with someone previously from Vanderbilt who'd been uploaded. But the match was not 100%, it was only 94%. And if you look carefully, you see it's Chiang, not Qing. And there's a slight difference there. So I have the option to reject that by typing something now it's done an additional matching and come up with the same thing. Again, that's wrong. Now it's going to go and try to find all the Chang ways that are in Wikidata. So here's a Chinese politician, uh, Tang Dynasty people. Anybody who's a dynasty person, it automatically rejects. Here's someone who's a researcher, but they're from Free Institute of Berlin. So I don't need to look any further there. Um, now, here is uh, someone for whom we don't know anything about except they are a researcher. So I can go ahead and type something and it will then go and look for articles. Okay, so that person hasn't published any articles. Let's check this person. Again, no other information, but if I have it, check the articles. Here's some articles, but the institution was in People's Republic of China. So that's not a good match. Um, let's try this one. Uh, okay, here's recognizing software names in biomedical literature. That's probably not the right topic because this person um, is a biophysicist. So none of those people matched. Now, here is an interesting case. Here is a person who uh, has a not a pretty unusual name and it matches perfectly. However, there's no further information. And if we um, have it look for references, it doesn't find any works authored by that person. However, I can click on the Wikidata link. And if I do that, I see that the reason they're in here is because they received the Bantling Medal, which is a prize. If we want to find out more about the Bantling Medal, we can click on that. It turns out that it is an award given by the American Diabetes Association. Now, if we go here and look for Alan Sherrington here, we see that he is a researcher on insulin and in fact is publishing in uh, journals about diabetes. So this is clearly the correct person. So sometimes we can sort of follow our nose and do some additional checking. So I'm gonna go ahead and flag this as a match and it's done. So at the end of the previous processing step, the data that had been collected or output into a spreadsheet. And this is what that spreadsheet looks like. So one of the things we can see here is that the script has actually been pretty successful at both uh, finding ORCID IDs for people in the department. And there's also a relatively high number of people who have been identified already. Um, one of the other uh, issues that has to be uh, be dealt with between the end of the last script and the next script is to assign um, gender or sex to the person. Um, I felt a little uncomfortable doing this, but um, it actually is important information. 
if the department has a website with pictures, then it's, a rel it's relatively easy to make a guess. Um, in some cases, if there aren't pictures or if I can't guess, I will end up just leaving that, that um, newly created column blank. So what happens in the next step then is for all of the people who we've discovered their Wikidata ID, this will go to the Sparkle endpoint and download all of the existing data for the things that, we're, that we are interested in tracking. Um, the other thing that it will also do is um, it will ping ORCID to make sure that these ORCID IDs will actually be referenced. And you'll see that happening as the script, script runs. So it's dereferencing the ORCIDs. Sometimes they're ones that Wikidata already knows about, sometimes they're not. And also, if Wikidata uh, knows the ORCID and it already has a date when it's been retrieved, it will use that original retrieval date. Here's an example. It also tells if it discovered anything potentially problematic, like it has a duplicate employer value, but that's fine because this may have been somebody that this person worked with before. If it discovers any new information that conflicts with the existing information, it will tell us that as well. So here's what the file looks like that results at the end. So one of the things that it retrieves from Wikidata is the existing labels for any people that are already there. So you can decide if you think, for example, here's a person whose middle name was not already known. We could, if we decided to, we could uh, write the full name. Also, we can look at the uh, descriptions. Some of them are rather stupid, like just researcher. So we'll probably want to change those to molecular physiologist. Also, some of them are crazy and have the ORCID ID as a part of the description. So we'll change those as well as well. Here you can see uh, the identifiers for all of the data that was already on Wikidata. Um, anything with blank identifiers means that Wikidata does not have that information and will be writing that information to the website. We can also check and just look at any um, sex or gender IDs that were already in Wikidata and double check that they match with the values that I assign. So that all looks like that's pretty good. So the last step that remains is to double check that um, none of the label description combinations that we've created conflict with existing ones on Wikidata. That's one of the rules that Wikidata has. If you, if you try to create a label for an item and a description that's the same as one that's already there, then it'll throw an error and the script will, that writes to the API will uh, stop. So we're just gonna pre-screen that by running this script. All it does is basically um, send a Sparkle query to the Sparkle endpoint checking the labels of all of these people. And when it's finished, it'll give us uh, an all clear for going ahead and doing the upload. All right, we're ready to roll. When we run the script that writes to the API, the first thing that the script does is to read the schema to understand the columns in the table, and then it starts writing to the API. If the API has uh, too high of a volume, then it will uh, wait uh, increasingly longer amounts of time but keep retrying until eventually it retries at five minute intervals. So we'll give it a minute here to see what happens. So the server lag dropped below five seconds and it's now starting to write. 
Every time it writes a record, whether it's a new record or an existing one, the API sends back JSON that indicates all the data that is associated with that record, the pre-existing data, as well as the new data that we've posted to the API. So one of the things that the script does is to go through the data that comes back and to pull out the identifiers that are associated with the new items that were being written into Wikidata, because that's basically how it keeps track of which of the items um, have been written and which ones have not. After it finishes writing the last record, then it goes back through and looks for any claims that were already made in Wikidata, but that needed new references. And it then runs through the table again and writes values of any references that um, Vanderbot is adding. Once all the rows in the table have been written, we can take a look and see what the table looks like. So here's the table for the molecular physiology uh, department which we worked on before and if you notice over here unlike before every item now has a Wikidata ID because the newly written records the, the API let us know what the uh, queue numbers were for the newly written records and those have been recorded in here and then as I said um, every property for which a particular item has a value now also has an identifier that goes with it, either identifier for these um, claims themselves or identifiers for the references that are associated with the claims. So if we go back to our original person, Dr. Jacobson, and look at what his record looks like now in Wikidata, we see that now his full name has been added instead of just his abbreviation. He now has a description. He's still a human, but he has a gender. Uh, he, there is also a reference indicating that he works at Vanderbilt University. He's associated with the molecular physiology and biophysics department. And his ORCID ID, which did not have a reference before, now has a reference because Vanderbot added it. 